A house fire turns crime scene in Castle Rock. We don't normally have uh, the entire Castle Rock police force here. Neighbors stunned after one person is found dead. Have you ever seen anything close Let to this? Back. No, not at all. Under arrest, police believe they have the suspect in a string of property crimes. I think he's responsible for, for close to half a million dollars worth of, of, of uh, property theft. Why investigators believe it could be even higher. And an expecting mom chooses quite the public location to welcome her little ones. Is this the craziest thing that's ever happened in your 15 years here? Yes. It's taking care of a bird, yes. <laughs> We begin in Castle Rock, where multiple investigations tonight are underway after a person is found dead at the scene of a house fire. Now, crews were called to this home at Dove Valley Place just off Founders Parkway about 2 this afternoon. And not long after arriving, the crime tape went up. Denver 7's Rob Harris is live in Castle Rock tonight with the latest on the investigation and hearing from neighbors stunned by what's happened on their street, Rob. Yeah, Ann, and really just looking for answers because as they tell me, it's a normally quiet street, but certainly not today. As you can see, about seven hours, even more than that, since the initial call came into police and fire, and they're still here investigating. They're investigating a death they're calling suspicious, and within the past 15 minutes or so, we did see an officer go into the house wearing a hazmat suit. We don't know uh, what exactly they're investigating inside at this point, but we do know that it continues to uh, be ongoing. We're told by Castle Rock Police that one other person was taken to the hospital. Uh, that, that person's injuries are not life threatening, but many neighbors have come up to talk to me today just trying to figure out what's going on. A lot of messages from friends, from my sister, from town council, wondering what's going on in the neighborhood. Laura Cavey has been representing her neighborhood in the Castle Rock Town Council for more than a year, and she's lived here for 16 years. I heard the sirens and the helicopters. I wanted to come down and see what was happening. At the same time, just after 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Alicia Wayman was getting a text and call from her kid's school just down the street from the scene. Got a text message and a phone call saying that the school that's right over there was on secure status. After the school was taken out of lockdown, Wayman picked up her kids, then walked across the street to see for herself. There are a lot of lights, a lot of police cars. Um, the entire street is blocked off, so something serious is happening for sure. All afternoon, the entire neighborhood has been texting and calling and driving by, trying to learn what happened on this normally quiet cul-de-sac. Everybody knows everybody. Um, I know some of the people that live on this block, um, and so we want to make sure everyone's safe. Now at this time tonight, as you can see behind me, there is still caution tape up down the whole cul-de-sac blocking off traffic. However, we have seen neighbors coming in and out so they can get to their houses. We are told by police that there's no threat to the public at this time, but we don't know when this investigation will wrap up. At this point, it doesn't look like they're going to be leaving here anytime soon. And Rob Harris, thank you. One person is dead after being shot by a police officer in Evans. According to the city of Greeley, officers were called to a home this morning because of a suspicious person. Officers say that person was armed and refused to follow commands. And police say they used less lethal munitions, but at some point an officer fired a weapon and the person later died at the hospital. Police have not ID'd the person and this shooting is under investigation by the 19th Judicial Critical Incident Response Team. In Weld County tonight, investigators believe they have the man responsible for a string of property crimes. And tonight, detectives believe there could be more victims out there, and they told Denver 7 CB Cotton they need them to come forward. Obviously, we're very shocked. Shocked because um, Rustin Feetner thought his locks were secure this, enough. This handle was completely broken off. But a thief found a way to break in and break hearts. We just lost a lot, right? And, and now here we have to invest even more. Uh, to just to feel safe uh, you know, on a piece of land that, that we ultimately want to live on and call home. This February, Feetner estimates at least $25,000 of property was stolen from his shed to include tools and a utility vehicle, all tucked away on a piece of property he owns. Feetner first alerted to the crime on a snowy morning in February. Got a call from a friend that lives up in Pinewood, just north of here. Um, basically asking if I had been up to the property that weekend and I said no we hadn't too much snow. Uh, he said well I had seen tire tracks on your driveway and I assumed you attempted to get up. Those tire tracks would turn into footprints as they continued up the mountain. In addition to footprints in the snow, the suspect also left behind another clue for investigators, this time on a trail camera. Officers spotting Thompson in video footage. 
Thompson was arrested early this month by a team of Weld County deputies. Now behind bars, he faces 25 counts, including 18 felonies, many of the charges involving theft or burglary. To get to this spot, to walk a mile up a very steep driveway uh, in six to eight inches of snow, they came here with a purpose. I do know that he uh, was targeting those large ticket items, um, cars, ATVs, Tools. Joseph Moylan of the Weld County Sheriff's Office saying detectives believe the suspect was part of a property crime ring in northern Colorado. I think he's responsible for, for close to half a million dollars worth of, worth of uh, property theft. So you know, th that's, a, that's a significant amount of uh, property to steal all by yourself. Deputies say Thompson is suspected in other crimes across the region and more charges could come. Luckily, detectives were able to recover Feetner's stolen utility vehicle. But his feeling of security, that remains long gone. We've, we've invested in multiple surveillance cameras now that uh, are at our gate. Uh, that track our driveway. And according to data from the Weld County Sheriff's Office, stolen property offenses went up by about 41% from 2020 to 2021. If anyone thinks they've been a victim of this accused serial burglar, they're asked to contact deputies in Weld County. In the newsroom, I'm CB Cotton, Denver 7. And Colorado leads the nation in vehicle thefts. Tonight, numbers show the problem is getting worse. The Colorado Bureau of Investigation says there were more than 10,000 stolen vehicles during the first two months of 2022. Data for March and April is not yet available. If that pace keeps up, thefts this year would surpass the nearly 37,000 thefts in 2021. And for more context, there were 28,000 vehicle thefts in 2020. The Colorado Democratic Party says Matthew Gray will not seek re-election to the State House. Gray, who represents Broomfield and Boulder counties, was arrested last Thursday on suspicion of DUI. According to a police report, Gray was trying to pick his children up from school when staff noticed he smelled like alcohol. Now, in this police body cam video, Gray is heard telling officers he had not been drinking, but he was experiencing symptoms related to anxiety and depression. The police report says Gray refused blood and breath tests. Now, he is scheduled to be in court June 8th. Denver 7 reached out to Gray again today for comment, and we have not heard back. And new tonight, Narcan could be available at Douglas County Schools when students return in the fall. At the school board meeting tonight, directors agreed to apply for Narcan through the State Department of Health. And if approved, it would be stocked at all Doug Coast schools by August. Narcan is a life-saving nasal spray that is used to reverse the effects of an opioid overdose. Now we checked and found Narcan is already available at other school districts, and that list includes Boulder Valley Schools and District 11 in Colorado Springs. Who could forget those images from last summer? That massive mudslide spilled onto I-70 in Glenwood Canyon and shut down the interstate for weeks. Well, tonight, CDOT's putting place proactive measures should this ever happen again. Now, they include constructing a new bathtub-like feature along the side of the road. So basically you dig a hole before the road or a culvert, so it allows the debris to come down. Because the main thing with these debris flows, it's not just water. It's a whole lot of mud mixed in, rocks, trees, all the stuff that plugs a culvert. And keeping I-70 open during the summer is essential for those who live and work in Glenwood Canyon. Ken Murphy runs Glenwood Adventure Company. He tells Denver 7 that no matter what, lessons learned from last year have made everyone more prepared. We're more prepared for anything they throws at us for the next few years, whether it be just construction lane closures or, you know, whether we have another mudslide. CDOT says more than $20 million was spent to reopen I-70 along with ongoing engineering contracts. The majority of that cost was paid by the Federal Highway Administration. Winter Park Resort is trying to alleviate housing concerns for its workers. The resort says it's in the process of getting final approval to build a new complex to house its workforce. This complex would be made up of two buildings and would accommodate about 300 people. And the plan is to begin construction this summer. And Denver 7 has been following the housing crunch impacting mountain and resort communities like Winter Park. Last year, the town council dedicated $325,000 to a program incentivizing property owners to convert short-term rentals into long-term rentals for people living and working in the community. You can find that story and all of our other stories on Colorado's housing crunch right now at thedenverchannel.com. A historic moment is just hours away. Now, this is a live look from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida, where in about four hours, a SpaceX flight will take Colorado native Jessica Watkins and three others 
to the International Space Station. And when they arrive, Watkins will be the first African-American woman to serve a long-term mission aboard the ISS. And we talked to her just a couple of weeks ago. She says she has been honored to be part of the legacy of black astronauts. But what she's looking forward to most is the ride up. The most exciting for me, especially as a geologist, um, is getting to look out the window, getting to see Earth from the unique vantage point Watkins is not the only astronaut on this mission with deep Colorado ties. The commander of the flight, Chell Lindgren, a graduate of the Air Force Academy, CU, and CSU. What a comfortable day today with 70s. I'll let you know which day is going to get to 80. You never know what you'll find at the thrift store. She was starting to make a nest in the potter, and then it was a couple days later she laid her eggs. A goose choosing an interesting spot to welcome her goslings into the world. Plus, he's coming back. Melvin Gordon set to return to the Broncos.